Good morning. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship this day, we invite you to greet those around you. The peace of the Lord.
page 184, Divine Service Setting 3. As you're able, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me and Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. I invite you to take the insert out from your bulletin for this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, and we will read together the words of the intro. And then when we come to the Gloria Patria in the bold print, uh, we will continue singing from the hymnal. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointing. For a day in your course is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a firm in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the For the Lord has the sun on his shield. The Lord is so
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the church, that with all the company of the redeemed, we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
speaks about that beautiful Savior, about Jesus, speaks to people who live in a time of death, but tells them what is going to happen at the end. Words of gospel and promise to us as well. Following the epistle reading, we will invite our children forward for a children's message this morning. St. Paul writes, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Invite our children forward at this time. Good to see you today. The next reading that we're going to hear, the gospel reading, talks about the lights that people used to have. They were called lamps. And the way that lamps worked is that they burned oil. And you know what? We burn oil here too. See those candles up there? All of them burn this oil. You just screw the top off, and you take some oil, and you put it in the hole, and you fill it up, and then that oil travels up the wick, and that way, when you light it, it'll burn. See how the fire just keeps burning, that oil just keeps coming up, and the candles burn. All service long, the candles will be burning from that oil that is in there. Yeah, you gotta stay away so you don't get burned, right? Yeah. Ah. Well, in the Gospel reading, Jesus is talking about oil for our lamps and some people who ran out of oil. And guess what? When they ran out of oil, the light went out. It stopped burning. Jesus tells this story, though, for a purpose, for a reason. And he's saying that each of us is kind of like a candle or a lamp. And the oil that goes into us, the oil that goes into us is Jesus. And when Jesus is inside of us, he is like that oil that helps us to shine, to burn, to glow. I have some, some flashlights here. And these flashlights work only because what's inside? Not oil and the flashlights, but what's this? A battery. You put a battery in, and then the flashlights work and shine and glow. So Jesus is kind of like that battery inside of us that makes us glow, or like the oil that makes this candle burn. Jesus says, "Be keep your lamp full. That means to keep ourselves full of Jesus. We do that when we come to his house and we hear his word, when we come to Sunday school, when we read our Bible. All of those things help to fill us with Jesus who can shine 
who can shine in us and cause us to be lights in the world. Because Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And the only way that we can be that light is when Jesus is inside of us, and then we can shine. Would you guys pray with me? Dear Jesus, you are the light of the world. You come into my heart so I can shine and be a light in the world. Help me to shine brightly, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Come and get one of these flashlights, and then you can head off to your seats. in the Alleluia verse.
grace, mercy, peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It was about this time of year on the 10 o'clock news. The weatherman comes on and says, we've been surprised a bit, but there is a heavy snow coming. It's gonna start about midnight. About half the town was worried. They ran to the store, hoping to buy a shovel, get some gas for the snowblower, some salt. But the store was closed. It was too late. The other half of the town, they went to bed, slept well, knowing that in the garage was all they needed, a shovel, gas for the snowblower, salt for the sidewalk. All was on hand. That half of the town was prepared. I suspect that when the first blowing, snowblower-worthy snowfall comes, shovel-worthy snowfall comes, some of us are going to be prepared and some of us won't be. Our snowblower won't start. We're out of gas. The the salt is gone and, and others will be prepared. They've thought ahead and made the right preparations. It's important to be prepared. Although if you miss being prepared for the first snowfall, you'll survive, you'll get by, you'll just have some inconvenience. But in our text, Jesus is speaking about being prepared for a different event. It's not a snowfall, but it's the coming of the bridegroom of Jesus himself. And it's an event that it's far more important that we make sure that we are ready. And so Jesus tells the parable of our text. We look at this parable in three parts, three truths. The first truth from this parable is this, that some aren't ready. When Christ comes back, some people will be found not ready, not prepared. And so Jesus speaks these words, and we proclaim these words with the goal and hope that all might be ready and prepared for the return of Christ, especially that every single person sitting here today is ready for that day. As we look at our parable, it's true that in biblical times, time was different. Nobody wore watches or had cell phones that had the time of day. Weddings were different then too. They lasted far longer. And communication was different in biblical times. There was no cell phones or other phones, no instant communication. It was word of mouth that traveled by foot. For a wedding, if the groom was from some distance, he might have to travel for a day or two simply to get to the home of the bride, which is where the wedding feast would take place. And so a wedding wasn't Saturday at 2 p.m. sharp, don't be late, but, but rather uh, the groom, he'll be getting here towards the end of the week. Be waiting, be ready for his arrival. And, and the bride's family, they would have attendants who would be there to make sure the bride was ready. Attendants to be there to greet the groom as he he arrived. 
And so in our text, this family has 10 attendants for this wedding. They take their lamps, they go to wait, but five take no extra oil. It takes the groom a bit longer than expected. The oil runs out. The attendants fall asleep. At midnight, the cry goes up. He's close by, he's almost here. They quickly light their lamps, but the lamps of the five quickly extinguish. And so they run, they run to buy more oil, but they are too late. They miss the bridegroom. As we talked with the children, these lamps that Jesus is talking about, they're not physical lamps in the sense of normal lamps, but they are people, heads and hearts, the places of faith within us are these lamps. It's what they represent. The oil represents what is the light of our lives. The oil represents what's most important to us, what we fill our heads and our hearts with. And some people, they value the, the wrong oil. They fill their lamps with things that won't last, with things that don't burn. They use their lamps to store other kinds of things, things that they think are more important. But on that day, when the bridegroom comes, what is in our lamps will be revealed. What is most important in our hearts and minds? And at that point, it will be too late for some. And at that point, there will be no opportunity to, to exchange that stuff for the right stuff. Too late. Now, if you just read the parable, perhaps you've been bothered by the, the thing that always bothers me when I read this parable. Just in an earthly sense, you would say, well, why didn't those first five share with the other five? That's a Christian virtue, right? The five with plenty of oil, shouldn't they have shared with the other five and everything would be okay? Well, my friends, this is not a parable about sharing. If it were a parable about sharing, that's exactly what would have happened. But this is a parable about being ready for the bridegroom. And when Jesus tells a parable, there's a main point. It doesn't mean that all the subpoints are going to line up perfectly, but he has one main point to be prepared for the coming of Jesus. And that it will be too late for those who are foolish, who are lazy, who fill their lives with things besides the oil of faith in Christ. Some will not be ready. But that very phrase, some will not be ready, leads us to the second truth of our text, which tells us that some will be ready. The other five in our reading, five are ready. Why? How? After all, they look just like the first five. They are sinners also. They're not perfect. They fall far short. And yet there is a significant difference. They have received the gift of faith, the gift of forgiveness. Their vessels, their lives are filled with Christ. There is oil in their lamps. Not junk, not other stuff, but oil. That oil, my friends, 
comes to us as well. How? It comes when we hear the word like we do today. Our lamps are being filled when we celebrate each day the waters of our baptism. Our lamps are filled when we come to the supper. Our lamps are filled, filled with Christ that we might burn, that we might shine brightly. Christ is the oil that lasts long, that will never run out, that burns brightly. The wise bridesmaids, they're chosen not based on merit, not based on anything of them, but based on Christ, based on what fills their lives, based on the faith given to them by the Holy Spirit. And the truth is, it's not that they didn't share in their lives. They shared Christ. They shared the importance of being ready. I suspect they spoke to those five saying, hey, you may need some more oil. But their advice was rejected. As Christians, we do share. We share the importance of Christ and being filled with him. But on the last day, once Christ has returned, it will be too late for the unprepared. On the day that a person dies, it's too late to change their status once they've died. No matter how strong the faith of their friends or their family, it's too late once they've died to change their status. For a believer, that's a great joy. <clears throat> Nothing can change our status. For an unbeliever, it's a warning directly from the mouth of our Lord. Our text says, for those who were ready went in. Those who were ready went with the bridegroom into the wedding feast. Some were not ready. And the door was closed, the door was locked, and there was no second chance. But for all who were ready, an eternal wedding feast with the bridegroom, with Jesus. And that brings us to the third and final part of our text, which is this truth, that Christ is coming again. It's a pretty simple truth, and yet people live their lives sometimes as if it is not true, as if they have all the time in the world, as if they know the day that Christ is coming back or they know for sure the day that he is not coming back. They know for sure the day they will not die. But let me tell you, no one knows that for sure. No one knows the day of Christ's return and no one knows the date of their death. Jesus says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Watch, be prepared, be filled with me, that you may have the oil, the exact oil that you need that will burn brightly in your lives. Nothing else is as important as this. Watch, wait. The bridegroom is coming to take us into that banquet, to bring us in to that heavenly banquet that never ends. For all who have the gift of faith, this is God's promise. This is a sure thing. Let our lives be filled with Jesus. Our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our lips, our hands filled with Jesus. He is the oil that keeps our lamps full, that keeps us burning, that keeps us living and sharing the light of Christ every single day until the bridegroom returns. And that, my friends, is the way that it is this 23rd Sunday 
after Pentecost in the year of our Lord 2017. The peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Jesus until life everlasting with the bridegroom. Amen. We stand and sing, Create in Me a Clean Heart. seated. We bring now our offerings to the Lord. Also, if you would uh, find the red folder in your pew, if you would sign that, pass it to anyone who is seated next to you. prayers today along with those listed in the bulletin we include uh, the family of Rosanna Bensky her mother uh, Monia Pinder uh, was called home unexpectedly this past week we rise for prayer almighty God we give you thanks that you speak to us of the end, that you speak to us of what is important. That our lamps, our lives, are to be filled with the oil of salvation, with Christ himself. That he might burn and shine brightly within us. We pray that we would not fill our lamps with other things think they are more important, but instead would continually, joyfully, gladly fill ourselves with the word, with the gifts of our baptism and the supper, that Christ might overflow in our lives, that we would burn brightly until the day 
the bridegroom returns. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those whose lamps do not burn, whose lives are filled with other things. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would use us, our lips, our words, our offerings, our deeds. We pray that you would bless all who proclaim the truth, that you would be with all missionaries, with pastors and evangelists, with each child of God, that you would call all of us and use all of us to bring the light of Christ to the lives who do not have it. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for your comfort for Rosanna, for all the Kinder family, that you would surround them with your love and we rejoice in your promise of eternal life for all whose lamps were burning on the day of their death. May this good news give comfort, hope, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for those who have served our country. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy. We pray that you would continue to be with and bless the veterans of our land and those of this community. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we pray also for our country, for our government, for our president and all the leaders of our land, that you would give to them wisdom, that you enable them to make good decisions, good laws, just decisions. They might bring about peace, justice, righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the leaders of our own congregation, for those whom you have placed into positions of responsibility. We thank you for their willingness to serve in these ways, dear Lord, and we pray that you would strengthen and bless them in their roles. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we commend to your care those who are ill, those who have been hospitalized, those who suffer in any way. We pray for your healing. Above all, that you would surround them with your presence, that they would know your peace, your love, that you would fill them with the oil of your son, Jesus. We commend to your care Geneva, Arlo, Bob, Elaine, Rodney, Megan, Corey, Lori, Mike, Jerry, Colleen, Shar, Harvey, Bruce, Dave, Beverly, Sally, Aiden, Mary, Jackie, Jan, and all others in any need. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.
special welcome to our guests this morning, um, traveling from different parts of the country. Uh, among our guests also, a uh, uh, nice surprise, uh, one of my classmates, high school classmates, uh, is with us, uh, Jeff Opheim. And uh, were you born in Parkhurst, Jeff? Uh, more, okay, all right. But and then, who maybe some of you know, he was a teacher here in, uh, in Parkhurst. Uh, before he came to Sherbert. Uh, so I taught Fayette, and uh, so good to have uh, both of you with us today. Let's enjoy. To all of our guests, welcome. Uh, Poppy is downstairs, I invite you to join us for that. Also for um, uh, Bible study and Sunday school after that. Thanks uh, to uh, Joanne for singing today, and, and uh, Marie. Uh, Joanne and Wilmer are leaving shortly for South. Uh, the Fredenbergs are leaving shortly. The Lord go with you as you uh, Travel will miss you and look forward to seeing you in the spring. Um, yeah. And then um, I also uh, this morning uh, want to uh, ask for your prayers. Uh, this past week I received a call to uh, St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Hinckley, Minnesota to serve as their pastor. And uh, so I'll be deliberating that call and would appreciate uh, your prayers and, and any words of uh, advice. Uh, that you might have uh, to give, that the Lord's will would be uh, clear and, and evident uh, in this situation. Pray the Lord be with you all and keep you this coming week. Ooh. 